What's up, guys? I'm Dom Rosso, and you're watching Red Wolf TV. It's been two years since the big unveiling from Tokyo Marui, a replica we've seen often, very often, probably a little too often. They're usually the first when it comes to something new, but they were beaten to the punch by companies like Inikatsu, GHK, the list goes on. Are Marui too late? My guess is that they took their time, perfecting it, making sure that they release the best M4 GBBR in the world. But is it? What I have here is just another M4, except, hear me out, this is the first full metal reel, as it says on the box, gas blowback M4 that the Japanese market can actually use. Companies like GHK, WE, they all shoot at around 400 FPS on top gas, and probably a little bit lower with HFC, still way too high for the Japanese market. This one should shoot at around 280 FPS exactly. The Japanese market were really slow on the uptake in this case, but we thought that companies like GHK, when they released their gas blowback M4, were way behind. Anyway, as I mentioned, it is a full metal M4, apart from the grip and the collapsible stock. Though the grip and the stock is something that you would change when it comes to external parts anyway. Underneath the collapsible stock is a commercial stock tube. You can fit a mil-spec stock in it, but there will be a fair bit of play. It features quad rails for all your accessory needs, an A-shaped front post sight with a flip-up rear sight. The MWS will come with a 14.5-inch outer barrel, and right on the end is a flash hider revealing a 14mm CCW thread. The mag release can only be found on the right side, releasing a 35-round gas magazine, which is not as heavy as the GHK magazine, which you charge from the bottom and the knocker on the top. The fire selector can be found on the left side and you can't switch it to safe, just like the real gun, unless you pull back the charging handle. Now, the hop-up can be found inside the breech, not like the KSC version which you use a key for, but if you turn it upside down, there's a dial that you can see inside there which you could adjust with an Allen key. The Tokyo Marui manual says that you're going to have to disassemble it, but this is the cheat way of going about it. The bolt release, the left side as per usual, releasing the bolts, which doesn't sound amazing. Sounds rather pathetic. Let's try that again. A little better. If I pull the charging handle back slowly, you'll notice that the nozzle stays in the breech till the very last moment. That means you'll get really good air seal and the gas should be pushed forward rather than seeing gas expelled from the breech like you would see on a lot of gas blowback rifles. One thing that Tokimuri has done that no other company tried was the Cerakote finish on the upper and lower receiver. As you can see, it's got a very nice thick coating, very smooth, highly resistant to scratches and bumps. I can't believe that no other company has done this. Inside, it uses a completely proprietary system. The magazine is proprietary, so you can't exchange it with any other magazines. But there is one person who can talk about this as he is master of anything gas blowback M4s. Gambit? Was that entirely necessary? Yes. Okay, great. So I understand that you're a big fan of GBB M4s. Yes, I and am. And you're actually a fan of a yes. Tokyo... Yes, okay. Yes. He is a big fan of a Tokyo Murray M4. Now, inside it has its proprietary Z system. So is there any way you could talk about that for us? Okay, uh, let's take it apart first. So what happens is uh, the Z system uses a proprietary system. What it does instead of standard metal piece, it uses a hook over here. So the hook piece here will engage the metal piece in here. When the magazine is out, the bolt engages. Inside here, there is a spring that will absorb some of the force whenever the bolt engages. Tokimuri has tested this over 10,000 shots and proven that this system is actually more durable than any gas blowback rifles in the market now. So this is what the system is all about. All right, OK. I noticed that the trigger unit is rather packed in comparison to other GBBIM4s. Is there anything you can tell us about this here? Well, as always, 
token Maru uses a proprietary system to begin with. And uh, however, if you notice over here, there's a roller. Yes. That will ensure the bolt cycle smoothly. So right. there will be very little friction going I on. I noticed there was a bit of a roller on the actual bolt as well, right here. Yes, exactly. That will also ensure the overall engagement between the hammer and actually the, um, the bolt will be very smooth as well. Is there any way you could show us how it would work? So basically the bolt is over here, right? We have the first roller that will engage the hammer over here in the back. Yes. So when it's hit, right. the thing goes back. Mm -hmm. And I noticed there's something new about the nozzle as well. Yes, it is made of plastic instead of metal. Hmm. Is there some pro to this? Yes, there is. Uh, plastic is more flexible compared to metal. So it actually provides a better air seal. So when each pump of gas is going to be focused on the BB and inner barrel instead, so it will improve accuracy and FPS stability. Okay, but what is the con? The con is when you release the bolt, it's going to give you a thunk sound instead of a metal uh, clink sound. Now I notice that the bolt carrier is in two parts. Yes, I believe it serves two purposes. One is to allow customers to short stroke the bolt, so maybe they can change out different stock tube. Another thing is to uh, change out the weight, so maybe give it more recoil. Okay, so there is a screw in there that you could remove yeah, it? Possibly, right here, the hex key. I see. So, one other thing as well. For those of you that don't know, Gambit is really picky about the trigger on GBBM4, so what do you think of the Marui version? Well, first of all, the first thing I noticed is that this is actually a two-stage mechanism. Usually, the other brand M4, you just need to pull the hammer down and then engage the trigger. But here, it has a safety button to press that will engage the trigger. Second thing is that the hammer only travels 45 degrees angle, whereas other brand M4s, the hammer travels up to 90 degrees angle. Right, so what do you think of the reset? I think, actually, it's very good because, first of all, let's look at where the break point is. The wall is right there. There's literally no play to it. Second thing is the reset is exactly where the wall is and there's no play to it as well. It's very crisp and pronounced as well. All right, thank you so much for your expertise. So that is it when it comes to its externals and internals. Now I can imagine some of you clicking on the link in the description just to find out how much the Marui version costs. But before you go, I urge you to have a look at all these M4s displayed in front of me. Yes, there are nine of them, eight of which are the Tokyo Marui's competitors and one of them is the Tokyo Marui M4. And I've displayed them in terms of price, starting from the cheapest to the most expensive one. So can you tell which one is the Marui version? Some of them are rather obvious as to which brand they are, others not so much, but we're going to start off with the cheaper area. The first three are just under 300 US dollars. The cheapest one by far is the WE Open Bolt M4. Then we have the KJ Works Tanyo Kobo M4. And then at $300 exactly, this is the King Arm CAA M4. $100 more expensive, we find the KSC M4 and smack bam right in the middle. $30 more expensive at $430 is the Tokyo Marui M4. Next up is the GHK M4, only a little more expensive than the Marui version. After that is the KWA LM4, but what surprised me is that the GMP walk is all the way up here. But what is not so surprising is that the most expensive M4 is the Inokatsu M4. The Inokatsu M4 is well known for having the best quality build out there and realism when it comes to field stripping. In fact, most of them can be field stripped rather realistically apart from the Tokyo Marui M4 due to its unique internals. Now you may be thinking that I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison but that would take way too long. So what I'm going to do is take this to the range and chrono the thing. We are now at Milsim CQB and Training Center at the 20 meter range. And first off, we're gonna start with the chrono test and then move straight on to the accuracy test. I should mention that first chrono test will be done with HFC 134A gas with 0.2s, and the second one will be done with top gas. I assume that for the past couple of years, Tokyo Marui have over-engineered their pistols. And I think they've done the exact same thing with their M4, which is why I think it'll run perfectly fine on top gas, though don't quote me on that. With HFC gas, it clocks in at just over 280 FPS. My assumption was correct. With green gas, it shoots at about 100 FPS higher at just over 370 FPS, which is amazing.
For the accuracy test, we're using 0.3 gram BBs instead of 0.2s. As you can see by the results, the grouping is exceptional, with the grouping about one and a half inches in diameter. This is something that we actually come to expect from Tokyo Marui. No surprise there. All right, as I've mentioned before, this is what the Marui sounds like when you release the bolt. It's just a thud sound, which sounds rather pathetic. Tokyo Marui more than make up for it with quality internals. Now for full auto. That's what it sounds like with HFC gas, but I know for a fact that it will wake up when we use top gas instead, and I can't wait for you to have a look at that. Let's awaken the beast. Oh, there we go. Full auto time. Ooh. That is quite brilliant, actually. You get a very fast clack, clack, clack sound, but I'm more of a fan of GHK's cling, cling, cling sound instead, but I still love the rate of fire on this in full auto. It's brilliant. So let's go back to the showroom and conclude this. I'm going to be honest here. Tokyo Marui are very late to the game, but like most latecomers at parties, they made quite an entrance. It is one of the more consistent M4s when it comes to chronoing it in, at just over 370 FPS if you use top gas. And in terms of accuracy, a gun that's just come right out of a box, it blows every other M4 out there out of the water. The build quality and realism when it comes to field stripping is obviously not as good as in Akatsu, but the internals are sound, the proprietary system is amazing, though that won't stop other companies out there from making spare parts for it. The Cerakote, beautiful, no other company has done that, and it kicks very well for an airsoft gun. So like I said at the beginning, is it the best M4 GBBR in the world? No, but I think Tokyo Marui have done a damn good job of it. But considering there are so many GBBM 4s out there, which one do I buy? So let's start off with the entry level WE M4 GBBR. Yes, if you're entering Airsoft for the first time and you wish to get yourself a gas blowback M4 and you only have a little bit of money, you'd get yourself the WE. But considering how much you would spend on the internals and getting that quad rail, it would cost exactly the same as the Tokyo Marui M4, so you may as well get the Tokyo Marui instead. So let's set this aside. Yes. Next up we have the KJ Works M4. KJ Work runs a 10 year Koba system, which used to be very reliable back in the day. However, it's kind of obsolete now and it doesn't match up with the modern day technology. That is true, same with King Arms. The internals are just not as great, even though it does look rather modern, it's not as accurate and not consistent in comparison to the Tokyo Marie version, so they're out of the question. There you go, well done Quake. Now next up we have the KSC M4 at 400 US dollars, which is... Actually my own personal GBBR. That is true. Now, why did you get the KSC M4? Because when it comes to performance, System 7 is actually a very reliable system. And Tokyo Marui wasn't out then. Exactly. So if you were to change the rails and the internals, wouldn't it just cost as much as the Tokyo Marui version? In fact, it does. So wouldn't you buy the Tokyo Marui version if that were the case? If that were the case, yes. Okay then. So now we know that Tokyo Marui is on the upper echelon of the GBBR M4 series. And only a little more expensive than the Tokyo Marui we find GHK. And there are so many pros to the GHK, we're going to set it aside for now and compare it later. But right after that, we have the LM4. KWA OEMs for KSC. So essentially, this is the exact same gun, but this model it had the facelift from PTS. So it's just a prettier gun with KSC internals, and we've just said that KSC is not as good as the Marui. So off we go. Now we have the GMP M4. GMP M4 runs a WA system, so it's a rather old system. When it comes to performance, it does not match up with Tokyo Marui. And it's twice the price. So why would you buy it? Now, if money isn't an issue, and I lived in a country where real guns are illegal and I wanted something to replicate the M4 as much as it could, I would get the Inokatsu M4 because it has soul and it feels amazing. But in terms of performance, it just can't do what the GHK and the Tokyo Marui can do in game. It is in its own category, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to remove it. So which one would you buy? Hmm. I'll probably go for the GHK because out of the box it can handle HFC gas, green gas, red gas, even CO2 and I like the trigger feel for this one better. And the recoil is pretty great. Yes it is. Now he's only saying that because he recently bought himself a GHK. 
And I'm very loyal to Tokyo Marui considering I have so many Tokyo Marui guns. And the internals on this are amazing. There are so many companies out there that would make spare parts for the Marui to make it run even better than it is now. And I want to win. I would buy the Tokyo Marui. Wait, 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 Tim. If you want to win, what's wrong with your Sistema PTW? Just saying. Hey guys, before you go, I should mention something. The WEP90 was something that was meant to be released five years ago, and I did a full review a week back, so if you haven't watched it, please click on this link here. It was so cool that I actually bought one for myself. Mmm, that new gun smell almost smells better than the top of a baby's head. The Silverback SRS A1 is a truly innovative and beautiful bolt action sniper rifle where the tension of the bolt is actually pushing it forward rather than back and you can adjust the hop up from two different directions so you can get those precise shots. If you haven't seen the full review, click on that link over there and you guys were right, you can find it in Battlefield 4 and the movie Born Identity. You guys have a very good eye. To find this product on our website, click on the link in the description below. See you guys on the next episode, Pornstash out.